Hey guys, what's up? I'm Nate. Hopefully you are arriving at this video because you're interested in uh, our gimbal holster Kickstarter project. Um, if you haven't seen the video that talks about how we came up with the idea for the gimbal holster and kind of the functionality, how it works, how you can use it and how it can benefit you, uh, we'll link that video below. Definitely check it out. Um, but if you're jumping right into this, essentially it's a holster that lets you carry a fully balanced gimbal or a six uh, axis one handed gimbal specifically with a uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera attached to it. So you can pull it out and you're ready to shoot. When you're done shooting, you stick it right back in the holster. It saved um, us a ton of time in our video productions. We use this thing uh, everywhere. The other video kind of goes into the details of it, but this is our prototype. We've been using it for about a year. And I want to take a few minutes to just show you how to tell if this Kickstarter project and this holster specifically will be a good fit for your rig. Um, and there are a few things to talk about, so let's jump right in. What we have here is a Moswa Aircross. Uh, we have on here an A6300 with the excellent Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. And I can say if you have this rig um, or a very, very similar rig, especially with an A6300 or the Sigma, then the gimbal holster will work for you. But if you don't have this exact rig, I wanna show you kind of some of the key things. Um, so the first thing is it's really important that the gimbal can fold up like this. This gives you that really slim form factor um, so that's the first thing to do is check your gimbal. And I mean, before we had our holster, what we'd actually do is I just, uh, even with the camera off, I would just leave the gimbal like this, strap uh, some Velcro around here and, and stow it away. So I never had to break it down. I never had to rebalance it. Now, unfortunately, due to the design of uh, these gimbals, usually the camera uh, lens weight is on the left-hand side. And so what ends up happening, and this was the case with this particular setup, is with so much weight on the left-hand side, what would happen is you would end up clipping right here. Um, and chances are, if you have any kind of a heavy camera or a heavy lens, that's what, you're, that's what you'll see with your gimbal. If you tried to fold it up like this, then it would actually be too long. It, it hit right here, which the only solution in that case is to break it down every single time. And that wasn't something that I was willing to do. So you can see that I have something um, on here. And uh, I'm gonna show you the first solution that I tried. It actually works really well. I found uh, these little weights. These are actually wheel weights that uh, mechanics supposedly put in your tires to kind of help balance them out. Um, you can get different sizes and weights, but these are one fourth ounces. And they actually uh, come off that paper and have kind of like a sticky uh, thing on the back so you can stick them to your gimbal. And uh, what I did is I lined them on the top, the outside, the bottom, and the inside. And then I just wrapped the whole thing with gaff tape. So what I have here is additional weight and it's completely balanced. And even if I want to switch lenses, if I want to go to a lighter lens, all that's going to do is it's going to make me uh, shift the whole thing this way and uh, I will never have a problem. Now, if I go with a heavier lens, then I might have to add additional weight, but you can kind of see how even just these small weights add uh, or affect the position of the gimbal. Now I'm off with just uh, this half ounce weight of these two on here. So that's the first step, uh, figuring out uh, how much weight that you need and if it's gonna be feasible. If you have a giant lens, it's probably gonna be impossible to get enough weight uh, to offset the lens. But with this kind of a setup, mirrorless, uh, with kind of a heavier prime or a DSLR with a light prime, you should be able to get it to work. Um, so now that my gimbal has folded up on itself and it has this slim form factor, now we're looking at uh, two different measurements. The first is this end right here. This is the small end of the gimbal. And uh, I've got about two inches right there. And the other side is the one that you might have a little bit more problems with. Depending on what your rig has, we use a quick release plate and obviously this uh, plate as well stays, uh, stays in this position all the time. And this is gonna adjust forward or backward depending on the weight of your lens. Smaller lens means that this is gonna be smaller. And we've kind of designed it so this is the max. And just to give you an idea, 
Um, this is coming in at just a little bit over three inches. Um, so those are the main areas that you need to think about. Uh, most gimbals should all be fine on this side, um, but this side, depending on the weight of your lens, is what, what you want to pay attention to. So uh, obviously the uh, gimbal folds up like this and goes right into the holster. And you can see that this side uh, has a little bit of a smaller uh, opening than this side. This is to accommodate the plate. And um, I'm going to show you this real quick. Um, on this end, we're actually at about three inches. But as you saw, the plate on our uh, gimbal uh, with our setup is actually three and a half. Um, on this side, on the bottom side, we're right at a little bit more than two inches. Um, because that this is because this is a soft foam padding, we have this banding. We actually have some flexibility to expand, or you can even cinch it up to contract it for a smaller gimbal. Um, and even though that plate is just a little bit too big on this side, because it's flexible, it still works. Um, I'm going to go ahead though and quickly show you the other dimensions so you can kind of have an idea of how big it actually is. So from top to bottom, the gimbal is 10 inches and uh, across from left to right, it's just a little bit over 10 inches. And again, remember that this is a soft case, so it does flex. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, and in fact, it's a little bit small for this, but we felt like this size would be the best for the multiple different variations of gimbals that we used. So the last thing that you need to check out is this uh, bottom hole. This is obviously the hole that the handle sticks through. Um, this is uh, a pretty close two inches by two inches. And um, it should be enough to accommodate the handle of pretty much every gimbal, but there is a slight issue if you have a follow focus or a knob like that. So you do need to measure it. What I would recommend doing is getting a piece of paper, measuring out two inches, cutting it out, and then if you can fit it over your handle without tearing the paper, you're definitely good to go. Um, one thing that I'm sure people will be asking about is the Ronin S. Uh, I know it's a popular gimbal. It's a little bit heavy. You know, We always try to keep things as light as humanly possible because we do a lot of uh, event uh, videography. But I did rent a Ronin S just to try it with this holster, and I'm really disappointed to say that uh, it would not fit through the bottom hole. Um, and I think there's a few other, definitely on the, the larger side of gimbals, um, like the new Zion Crane, I believe. If it has that follow focus knob, you definitely want to check and see. Um, in my opinion, uh, you know, if you're interested in something like this, you're probably definitely focused on having the lightest solution as, as possible. Um, although, in the future, we may be able to make bigger sizes. Um, that'll be something and possibly a stretch goal. Uh, so if you're interested but it just doesn't quite fit, I would love to know the dimensions of your rig so we can kind of plan for the future. If this is something that you want but one part of it is just not going to work due to the specifications and the size, definitely uh, let us know and um, we're definitely considering just making like a larger version and maybe a slightly smaller version. I would definitely re recommend this to any wedding videographer or anyone that uh, not only doesn't want to hassle with, with dealing with breaking down their gimbal, but also just wants to save their arm. Um, over the course of a full day of shooting, uh, I cannot tell you how nice it is to be able to just throw it in the gimbal for 15 minutes or throw it in the holster for 15 minutes and not have to carry it around. And then when it's in the holster, we're able to do other stuff as well, uh, like photography or, or use other equipment. And we never have to worry about setting it down or getting lost. It's always right there on our side. If you want to see more of it in action, check out the other video. It's linked below. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I know this is kind of a, a, a different product. And due to the specifications of it, there are go definitely going to be questions. And uh, we will be available to answer all of them uh, as best that we can.